And let's be honest here, this community really, oh, in this community. Berkeley is really into their food. This is a big issue for yeah, Berkeley. Yeah. And Berkeley is not just into their food. They are not into high fructose corn syrup. They are not into nitrates and nitrites. And they are not into preservatives and processing. So, you know, there is a big push for this from the community that put pressure on their politicians yeah. because they, you know, are the politicians, right? And then um, Michelle Lawrence, we had a superintendent that was able to push it through the school system. I mean, school systems are tough. Getting this off the ground was not easy, but it was necessary, and I believe necessary for every school district in America to be able to do this. Like you said, it depends. It varies on districts. It depends on how, how much the district wants to back the program. Right. You know, it, is it replicable? Yeah, it's replicable, but that all depends on the district right. and on the support, right. you know? Right. so. I think if you get the community behind you, if you get parents and teachers, and it doesn't have to be exactly what Berkeley's doing right now. If you just say, hey, you know, we're not gonna buy our kids Chicken McNuggets anymore. You know, when we're gonna have chicken on the menu, we're gonna buy real chickens. I mean, there's always baby steps to be had. And, you know, maybe it's just starting with organic milk. Then the next year you say, okay, we're not gonna buy Del Monte canned fruit cups anymore. We're gonna buy fresh apples. So how many meals are you preparing a, a day? Or what, about 20, 2,800 meals a day. Yeah, about 28 here. Okay, so this is um, the cold area, this half of the kitchen. Um, we also get our deliveries, so milk, all the milk and dairy is in here, produce is in there. We have another walk-in at the end, which is meat. Most of the items that we get, all of the items that we get from the state mm -hmm. are, are not processed, it's all raw. Protein. So we get like We spend turkey, a lot of our money on the protein. We get pork for pork roast, and then we decide what we're going to do with it. We don't use process. The USDA food that we do get drives our menu. It's not like, oh, you know, it's September, and I think I'll do something with uh, butternut squash. It's like, hey, we just got 4,000 pounds of diced chicken meat. We need a menu where we can do this. We have a whole series of ovens. Um, we can cook in those overnight. We can cook in, in the tilt skillet and the um, kettle overnight. We do that. We cook all our roasts overnight. We are really prepping today, say for Monday, more so than you are. Yeah, we actually work on a two-week cycle. So we order it two weeks in advance, we prep it a week in advance, and then it gets cooked at the last minute and sent out. So what's your participation? Pretty high participation. It depends on the school, though, again, because of the demographics of each school being so different. Um, we serve an average of a, we have a pop, per, population of about 7,700 kids, including my preschool, and we feed about 5,700. So when you do make the change, do it slowly. And the reason for that is because you will see participation drop, and that's because it's new food that um, kids aren't familiar with. It's not what they're eating at home. What I'm pleased about is that Others can learn from the mistakes that we made, and I think, in fact, can learn from some of the things that we did right. There isn't a reason, in my way of thinking, that you can't do this program. I, I believe it's doable. It is not that expensive. You can, in fact, leverage your own internal dollars to make headway. We don't have you know, the, the meals for needing money and whatnot, and we have to subsidize out of the general fund, then the community as a whole has to believe and agree with yes. that philosophy and that we're gonna take some of the money 
from an education out of the classroom. I mean, call it what it is. It's going to come out of the classroom and it's going to go into food services. And what's the value? Berkeley was in front of this tidal wave that we see as diabetes and obesity, and so had an opportunity to get a jump start on changing the food, but with some real commitment to solving the problem. This, in fact, can be done in just about any place. You know, part of it is making yourself available to answer the concerns. And we, Marnie and I went to a lot of PTA meetings. Um, in the evenings last year and we talked to, to a lot of parents of and we even got translators. Everybody does in fact value their children. And when they come to learn that something they are doing is harmful to their kids, they might not be able to change it right away, but they certainly want to. And I think that's a door that opens them. Kids cannot learn academically unless all of those other parts of them, their social, emotional, and physical well-being are addressed. And that's what I think schools ought to become. I think if I were to help push an initiative in this country, it would to recognize that schools have a responsibility for the whole child.